Hi, I'm Leah and today I'm going to show you how to install new wires and new spark plugs on your automobile. This is a tune-up folks and if you were to take your car in to have the wires and the spark plugs replaced it could cost you $250 to $300. I'm going to show you how to do it for less than $50. Okay, so let me show you some of the items that you're going to need. Tools and uh, um, supplies. Now it's possible we may not use everything, but we could. Definitely you want to have a pair of gloves. This is a breaker bar. May not need it, but it's been my experience that there's always that bolt that won't budge. Um, a pair of bungee cords. I have a spark plug deep socket. What I like about it is it's got like a rubber stopper in it and it grabs the spark plug and holds it in place. Next you want to have a ratchet set with um, various sockets. This is anti-seize. You want to add this to the spark plug threads prior to installing the new spark plugs. You know it just makes the job easier next time around when you need to pull that spark plug. You'll want to have a Phillips screwdriver with a Phillips bit and also a flat head. Next you want to have your new wires, your new spark plugs, and I'll tell you the one thing that you may think is missing but isn't is the gap setter. With this particular automobile, it's a Subaru Forester 2004, the spark plugs come preset. Now, uh, I'll tell you, you may need to set the gaps on your spark plugs. So refer to the tool section of the website in C Jane Drill, and there's a video there showing you how to use a gap setter. Now, how do you find the spark plugs? That is what you may be asking. If you've never ever changed a spark plug in a car, where do I find them? Well, let's just get an overview here, okay? We've got the battery over here, we've got a radiator, but if you look straight ahead, well, what is this thing? This is the ignition coil. And these are the wires that are going to lead you to your spark plugs. What you want to do is you want to follow the wires down to the spark plug. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to have to remove this air box, get it out of the way, and then we'll get a really clear picture of where we're going. Let me do that now. So uh, I have a ratchet and a socket, and this socket is going to fit the bolt that I need to take off. So I'm going to snap it on. There we go. And now I'm going to take this uh, bolt out. Now I have two more bolts that I have to remove and for those bolts I'm going to need an extension. And that's what this is. I'll put that on the end. Insert my socket. There we go. And remove this. So I'm going to remove this. I don't have a lot of room to... It's going to take me a little bit of time. Okay, so that was the third one and the last one. Now we'll be able to get the air box out of the way. Let's pull it right up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bungee cord and I'm going to bungee this off so it stays out of my way. Now remember what I said about following the wires down. If you follow them, there you go. That's where they end. Now what we have is this is a four cylinder automobile. So we have four spark plugs in total. We have two on this side follow the wires on the other side, it will lead you to the other two spark plugs. Okay folks, here's a very important thing that you want to keep in mind. When you're doing a tune-up, you're pulling the spark plugs and wires, remove one spark plug and one wire at a time. It's going to help you keep track of which wire you're pulling off the ignition coil. Trust me on this one. Okay folks, this is the first wire that I'm going to remove. So this is my ignition coil. I'm just going to pull this off. There we go. That's it. That's the first wire removed from the ignition. Now I'm going to follow it down and I'm going to want to remove this. I want to remove the cover off the spark plug. 
you want to make certain that you grab the cover by the tabs, not the wire, and pull. Now let me show you what I'm pulling out of here, okay? This entire wire, we're going to remove and install a new one. So now I'm going to remove this wire here, and I'm just going to feed it through the bottom. That's probably going to be the easiest way to do it, just to get it out of there. Okay, so that's, that's removed. This is the old one. We won't be using it. Now one thing you want to be mindful of is the cables are all different sizes, and you want to make certain that the old cable you're pulling off is going to match the new cable that you're putting on. This is way too long. This will be, this cable's for the other side. That's the right size, right there. So, this is the new cable, this is the old. So I'm going to attach it to the coil now, I'm going to get it in position. Okay, so I've run it through, and I'm close enough to the, uh, the ignition coil, I'm just going to install that. So that's on there. So our new wire is attached to the ignition coil, and we're just going to set this aside for now, because we're going to have to attach this this to the new spark plug. So we're just setting it aside. Okay, now let me show you where the spark plug is. This hole. The spark plug is inside. We've got to go retrieve it and we've got to use a ratchet with an extension on it to get that spark plug out. Okay, so this is when I need my spark plug socket and my extension. And I'm going to start by hand. I'm not going to put the ratchet on this because I'm going to need the sensitivity of touch to determine when this socket is well seated on the spark plug. Let me show you how. Now I'm going to insert it into the hole because that's where our spark plug is. And I'm going to that's it. I've got it. I know that the spark plug is seated well because I can't turn it left and I can't turn it right. So now what I need to do is I need to put the ratchet on. The ratchet is in place. Now what I know is that I have to push forward because forward is moving the ratchet to the left and left is loosened and that's what we're going to be doing. Now, I, I have a feeling that the spark plug is going to be seized. I'm not going to be able to do it by hand, and I'm going to need a breaker bar. But let's see first. It's seized. Okay, you can use any rigid pipe as a breaker bar. I'm using a 3 and a quarter inch by 18 inch piece of iron pipe. And what I've done is I've taped off the ends to give it a little bit more of a snug fit. And you insert your wrench. In, and it gives you so much more leverage to turn that, that, that nut. Okay, I'm going to insert. There's, I'm going to insert my breaker bar like that. It's still seated on there. I can tell that it's still seated. And now I'm just going to move forward. There we go. And once I get it to the point where it's pretty loose, I'll take the breaker bar off and I'll just do it by hand. So forward, folks, is away from, from your body toward the firewall of the car. Okay, now I've taken the ratchet off, and I'm just going to retrieve it by hand, and I'm going to slowly pull it out. There's our spark plug, folks. So I have my new spark plug, and now I'm going to want to apply some anti-seize to the threads of the spark plug. I'll put a little dab there, okay, and then I'll smooth it apply it with my hands. There we go. And again, that's just got, you want to apply it to the threads. Make certain you apply it to the threads. You just want to make certain that you have anti-seize because next time you do a tune-up and you pull the spark plug, it's going to come out a lot easier. You won't have to use a breaker bar like I did. 
I've got the new spark plug uh, seated in the uh, uh, socket and I have the extension on. I'm going to do it by hand. So now the reason why I'm doing it by hand, I'm guiding it in by hand and I'm going to start to thread it by hand is because I don't want to cross thread. And I'll be able to fill that with my hand. I won't be able to feel it if I used a ratchet. So I'm going to guide it in. And this is kind of tricky folks because you want to make certain that you don't cross thread. So what is cross threading? Cross threading is when you don't line up the threads perfectly but you still screw in the bolt or in this case the spark plug. Folks don't cross thread. Okay now I've tightened it as well as I can by hand now it's time to put the ratchet on it and tighten it just a little further. Okay now that's tight but I just want to give it a good twist. I don't want to twist too hard. I just want to give it a maybe a quarter turn. That's good. So folks you want it tight but you don't want to over tighten. Now I'm going to remove the, the ratchet or the extension. There we go. Now I'm going to install the uh, wire, the new wire, over the spark plug. And so I want to just insert it and twist. There we go, that's on there. Folks, it is as simple as that. Just repeat that process with the remaining three. If you've got a V6, then there are going to be six. And if you've got an eight, then you're going to have eight spark plugs to replace. Just be mindful only pull one wire at a time and replace one spark plug at a time and that way you'll keep track of what wires you're pulling off the ignition coil. So folks, that's it. I'm finished. All I got to do now is crank up that engine. So folks, that's it. I'm finished. And I'll tell you, it was a job worth doing because I wound up saving $200, $250 by replacing the spark plugs and wires myself. It took me about 45 minutes to do the job, but this is something that you can easily do yourself. This is Leah saying, you can do this. See you next time.